What's up, Taiwan? I'm Yvonne Yang with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. A delegation from the British Parliament has met with President Tsai Ing-wen. It's the latest in a string of visits by overseas lawmakers showing their support for Taiwan. Louis, what is life for us in Taipei? Louis, how important is this visit? It's the latest in a stream of delegations. Europe and the United States that has come to Taiwan to talk trade and semiconductors, but also to show their support for Taiwan as it faces pressure from China, as China tries to squeeze its space on the international stage. So they're here to show that Taiwan still has international friends. Now, the delegations are all members of the Labour Party. That's Britain's main opposition party. And in a way, that's significant because the Labour Party is is the favourite to win a general election that's expected to be called in Britain later this year. And they're expected to defeat the Conservatives, who've been in power since 2010. So while none of the members of the delegation have high-ranking roles in the Labour Party, it may be a good opportunity for officials here in Taiwan to try and get some insight into how a possible future Labour government may approach Taiwan and China. And what could a change of government in Britain mean for China and Taiwan? Well, Keir Starmer, who is the leader of the Labour Party, widely expected to become Britain's next prime minister, he's previously said that he would like to see Britain wean itself off Chinese trade and technology. And that's because of national security issues, allegations of Chinese spying, and also allegations of human rights abuses by China, for example, in Britain's former colony of Hong Kong. Uh, but that said, uh, Labour's foreign policy spokesperson, David Lammy, he said it's important to engage with China. Uh, he says there may be times when, yes, um, they can work together with China in fields such as climate and global health. And while it's important to have a trading relationship with China, he says, it can also be important to compete with them. So it's unclear what a Labour government's foreign policy would be, and policies, of course, do change. But that said, in recent years, there has been a growing skepticism more wild, wildly of China. Um, for instance, David Cameron, when he was prime minister of Britain, he oversaw what was called the golden era of UK-China relations. Well, just last month, he actually said that it has become a real challenge to have a relationship with a more assertive China. Um, and he also said, Cameron, he's now the foreign policy chief of the British government, he said they're very concerned about a possible Chinese invasion or blockade of Taiwan because of the calamitous effect it would have, not just on Taiwan, he said, but also the global economy. So what's clear, whoever is going to be the next government in London is probably going to be paying much more attention to this region. Well, thank you, Luis. That was Luis Watt talking to us live in Taipei. Taiwan's former president, Ma ying visited a major Chinese car manufacturer on the second day of his trip to China. Ma toured BYD facilities in Shenzhen, Guangdong province. BYD is the biggest electric vehicle maker in the world. Ma was accompanied by Song Tao, the head of Beijing's Taiwan Affairs office. Ma is leading the Taiwan youth delegation to China on an 11-day trip. He is expected to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping next week. Investigators have found traces of a fatal toxin at a Taipei restaurant caught in the middle of a deadly food poisoning scandal. John Ben Trias has the latest. A forensic lab may have cracked the mystery of the food poisoning case that's left two dead and dozens sick across Taiwan. Samples taken from the Taipei restaurant where all the victims ate have tested positive for a fatal toxin called boncrecic acid. Taipei Mayor Jiang Wan'an announced the findings in a press conference. Taipei 
，赶快联系检方，通知检方这个讯息。Boncrecic acid can form on certain foods like noodles that aren't properly stored. But exactly what happened is still being investigated. As investigators work to figure out where the toxin came from, doctors are still trying to save several of the severely ill. A few will need drastic action to survive. These four people who suffered the most were very strong. Even two may consider changing diet. One question that's followed this scandal does appear to have a final answer, though. The question of who is going to pay compensation. The branch of the restaurant chain where diners fell ill let its insurance lapse due to debts. This means the insurer for the food court where the restaurant is located will have to foot the bill. It could cost them up to 1.2 million U.S. dollars between the 31 sick and dead. 原本 S 三保林茶室有包含在台湾大时代所投保的公共意外责任险附加食品中毒保险条款之承保范围内，本案大概保险的额度又会再增加。But the restaurant chain as a whole won't get off completely. Its other Taipei locations, like this one, also let their insurance lapse. Taipei's mayor has promised a fine on the restaurant chain itself. No insurance fee. 这件事情会再重罚共一百万元。The financial fallout may be settling, but this case isn't closed. On top of questions about how so many got so sick and about survivors' chances for recovery, there are also questions about who, if anyone, is going to face criminal responsibility. Taiwan's unsettled public wants the answers. Joseph Wu and John Van Trieste in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Prepare for more extreme weather events. That's a warning from meteorologists in Taiwan. It's going to get warmer for longer, and while that may sound good to some, it has some serious downsides. Tiffany Wang reports. Putting a damper on the weekend, heavy rains temporarily shut down this temple party in southern Taiwan, causing chaos for attendees. A weather front brought intense rains across the entire country, and the increasing occurrence of such extreme weather events has meteorologists here concerned. They predict that due to warming temperatures, Taiwan will see shorter winters, longer summers, and more frequent high temperatures, and even more intense typhoons in the late summer. Which they say will require different classifications and corresponding safety responses. That Taiwan 来说的话，就是只有三种。那我我也建议说，未来可以应该可以讨论说，是不是再把台风的等级分得比较细一点点。Taiwan's Central Weather Administration says early warnings are key to preventing disasters, and officials are planning to increase drills and improve communication with the public. 防灾的角度来讲，我们叫做这个最后一里路，一定要到民众他能够做反应。很多是要透过演练的方式，或者是还有一些救难的的的措施来加强整个的合作。And with flood season coming up, authorities here hope people pay close attention to these warnings, with the expectation that more extreme weather is yet to come. Kama Shi and Tiffany Wong for Taiwan Plus. Iran says at least seven people have died after an airstrike on its embassy in Syria. Those killed include three senior commanders and four officers in Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Tehran says Israel was behind the attack, but the Israeli ministry says it won't be commenting on media reports. Protesters in Iran were seen burning Israeli and American flags after the attack. Tensions between Israel and Iran are growing as Israel's war on Hamas continues. Syria and Russia are among the countries to criticize Israel over the attack, calling for an immediate end to attacks on Iranian assets. North Korea has fired a suspected intermediate-range ballistic missile off the country's east coast. According to South Korea, the missile flew about 650 kilometers, falling just outside Japan's exclusive economic zone. It's Pyongyang's third ballistic missile launch this year. Leader Kim Jong-un has vowed to boost the country's weapons program. Indonesian president-elect Prabowo Subianto has met with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing, promising to maintain friendly ties. Prabowo said he'll continue his predecessor's legacy and work closely with China on building closer economic and trade ties. Xi said the two countries will improve strategic cooperation. 
It's Prabowo's first international trip since winning Indonesia's election in February. An independent bookstore in Hong Kong has been forced to shut down after battling intense political pressure. It's one of many stores that have had to close as the city imposes new security laws. Rosie Greninger reports. In a small nook in Hong Kong, hundreds of book lovers gather to say farewell to one of the city's last remaining independent bookstores, now closing due to intense government pressure. Last month, Mount Zero announced it would shut its doors after constant visits from authorities threatening jail time and fines. They said they received anonymous complaints accusing the store of illegally occupying government land. The offence? Tiling a pavement in the front of the store and using its alleyway to hold book talks. There's been a crackdown on freedom since Beijing imposed a national security law in 2020, criminalising acts seen to undermine China's central government. Just days ago, the scope of those offences was widened and penalties were increased to a maximum of life in prison. The territory's officials have rejected allegations that the laws curtail freedoms of expression, but it's already diminished some civil liberties, including purges of politically sensitive books from public libraries. Forty other independent bookstores have also shut their doors since 2020. Uh, the handful of remaining independent stores where sensitive titles are available and liberal discussions are allowed say they're operating in an environment of increasing provocation. Several of them reported spikes in similar government inspections due to complaints about fire safety and labour regulations in December. In the face of these increasing pressures, some liberal-minded Hong Kongers have turned to selling books in wet markets or running mobile operations. It is the spirit. And that spirit is unvanquished. It's not... Um, it, it does not di disappear. It does not become depressed because of all this. It actually... You look at how cheerful people are. You know, they, they are totally undaunted. In fact, the, the, the fact that they have survived this kind of oppressive uh, uh, behaviour is something to celebrate. For many here, the closure of Mount Zero is another hit on freedom of speech in Hong Kong. But the unwavering support in the store's last minutes is seen as a sign of hope that those who dream of a more liberal city are refusing to turn the page in the face of political pressure. James Lin and Rosie Greninger for Taiwan Plus. A former lawyer has been sentenced to death in China for the murder of Netflix producer Lin Qi. The show Three Body Problem was released by Netflix earlier in March. Days later, a former lawyer who secured the series Xu Yao was found guilty of the 2020 murder of Lin Qi over a business dispute. Lin was called China's billionaire millennial as his company owned the rights for the film adaption of this series. Xu was found guilty of poisoning Lin after he was sidelined over the Netflix deal. A Taiwan indigenous film has been named the best travel film at this year's Global Short Film Awards at Cannes. The film called Mountains, Forests and Islands highlights the culture of the indigenous Zhou group in the mountains of Alishan in central Taiwan. Filmmakers say they want to showcase the indigenous culture in a fashionable and modern light. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more of our stories. Finally, the public had a chance to see these polar bear cubs at the zoo in Siberia for the first time. They were born at the end of last year. I'm Yvonne Yang. Take care, and I'll see you next time.